Well, so does he. He's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. And now, live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones. Well, it's caucus day in Iowa. It's all kicking off, and the molders and manipulators of perception, they've got all these articles out about polls show landslide for Mr. Abortion, Mr. Open Borders, Mr. Carbon Tax, Mr. Obamacare author Mitt Romney. All part of the perception management. But I actually went and looked at more than 10 polls this morning, all scientific, and Ron Paul is winning five of them. And Mr. Romney is winning the other five. So it is a dead heat. If you look at a spectrum of polls, their, their photo finish, where they've got to you know, take that snapshot at the Indy 500 or at the horse race to see which car or which horse's nose was an inch ahead. It's like instant replay. Did they get the first down on that play? But instead, the, the PSYOP is running to try to make Iowans feel like, well, I want to vote for the winner. You know, I liked Ron Paul, but, you know, they say Romney's going to win, so I better just go ahead and vote for him. And after all, they say that Iowa's so important, but not if Ron Paul wins. It discredits Iowa. I better vote for Romney. And of course, even if Paul wins now, they're having secret counting of the different precinct tallies at a secret location because Anonymous has come to town and is protesting Ron Paul and is threatening to shut down and hack things. Now, Anonymous is just some blank wall that good people can do political action under and bad people can. But I've always said anything that calls itself Anonymous and doesn't have a manifesto is dangerous because then the system can do things in your name. Kind of like Occupy Wall Street was not supposed to have any political basis, any political standing. We're just against Wall Street, which then translated against capitalism. And it turned out it was the White House. It was George Soros behind it. But they left it as a blank slate so good people would show up, diverse crowds, so they could then project their ideas of controlled opposition onto them. It didn't work. So uh, the government first was endorsing and saying, come out and take over and we'll pass more taxes to give you what you want. But as soon as we went in and woke them up to end the Fed and the New World Order, and now the mega rich, the mega elite use big government to shut down their competition, they flushed Occupy Wall Street down the toilet and demonized it everywhere. And now you don't hear about it. That was an attempt at triggering a revolution before the real one comes. Very, very simple. That's what they're doing. It's elementary, but the general public is just now starting to get it. And the truth is there. We've just got to get it out to everyone. Now, obviously, we're going to break down more of NDAA, the huge developments in Iran right out of the break. A Marine facing a whole bunch of time in prison for walking into the airport and saying, I'm here to check my gun, which is totally legal in almost every state. But they just pounced on him and are throwing the book at him because the system is geared towards law-abiding gun owners and particularly veterans. So we're going to be breaking all of that down today as well. And I have another London Independent article here, Crackdown on Small Firms, a Blind Eye for Big Businesses. And this is a breakdown uh, out of England, but I've seen similar articles here in the United States where they've almost cut down to nothing. IRS enforcers on big Fortune 100 who were basically exempt and pay no taxes. But the general public, in fact, blue collar workers are having the book thrown at them. And then lower middle class and middle middle class and upper middle class are being hammered. Absolutely hammered. You're making $40,000 a year. IRS constantly sends people letters saying, oh, uh, we calculated you owe $2,000 more. Squeezing the little guy. We'll be right back. I'm going to open the phones up in this first hour. We've got a lot of big guests today. we got Ron Paul's brother joining us. Uh, we've also uh, got one of the Baldwin brothers joining us. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Well, it's the big day, the kickoff officially of the 2012 presidential election, the Iowa caucuses. 
We're going to be tracking this throughout the three hours and on InfoWars Nightly News tonight, 7 o'clock, transmitted from InfoWarsNews.com. And we have Wayne Paul, brother of Congressman Ron Paul, uh, joining us to talk about uh, his view of what's happening in this country. Wayne is a longtime anti-Federal Reserve, anti-New World Order uh, activist. And we'll get uh, Wayne to also give us uh, his take on who Ron Paul really is and what he thinks of all of these attacks. And we'll open the phones up so you'll have a chance to talk to Wayne Paul. That is coming up today. I have a New Year's resolution that when I do take calls, I want to go to them quickly and I want to take a lot of them. And I have a tendency to get so caught up myopically in news and in analysis and in basically ranting and raving that I, I, I don't go to as many calls as I'd like to. Because there's only one person that's my boss here on the radio, and that's that's unfortunately Alex Jones. Um I'm actually an old hand at radio. I've been doing it almost 17 years. It'll be 17 years in about a month. But uh, I I tend to like the shows where I mix it up with audio and video clips and analysis and different news items and cover some science and technology and cover some news of the strange and take a lot of calls and have interesting guests on. That's the shows that I like. And I go off of what I like. Now, listeners have told me they like it when I rant and rave for two hours straight. I understand that. Uh, but callers are so good because they take us in different directions. They raise issues I wasn't aware of. A lot of times they bring up local news that we then go find, write an article about, and then next it's on the Drudge Report. So calls are key, and my New Year's resolution is to work more of them into the show. So here's the deal. I'm going to give the number out. And I'm going to go to your calls in this segment and throughout the hour interspersed with, with key news. And we're going to have a lot of calls for Wayne Paul, CPA, political activist, patriot, uh, as well. And then we're going to have open phones again in the third hour. I was going to have uh, Chuck Baldwin's son, who's a great patriot on, but so much is going on with the caucuses. I want to talk about states' rights with them. I'm going to work on getting him on tomorrow or on the nightly news. Because I'd left a note, and I think the producers, well, it said get him on today, and I meant tomorrow. So we're going to uh, work on doing that uh, tomorrow. Apologize uh, to Mr. Baldwin. Because I want to be able to cover the news in the third hour and take your calls. Here is the toll-free number to join us. 1-800-259-9231. Obviously, I'd like to get your take on the presidential election, on the Republicans saying that they're going to count the votes in secret to protect its integrity. See, that's the riddle hidden in plain view of national security. You let the government operate in secret and have unlimited funds and power, and now they're saying, we'll kill U.S. citizens, we'll secretly arrest you for national security, we're overthrowing the Bill of Rights and Constitution, which is the country. So the force you set up to supposedly protect the country is what always ends up being used in Rome and in many other civilizations and empires to bring it down. Our founding fathers, all of them, wrote articles and books and gave speeches where they talked about, at nauseum, uh, uh, the United States will not fall from without. No army can stand against us. We have an armed, informed citizenry who's ready to fight. They just beaten the greatest empire in the world who'd never been defeated. A ragtag band beat them because they were willing to fight. They said, we will only fall from within. And the system menaces the public and says, Iran's going to nuke you if you don't, uh, you know, elect Mitt Romney or Santorum. That was the talking point on talk radio nationally and locally. And I just thought, here's Israel rumored to have 800 nuclear weapons, confirmed to have over 400, cruise missiles, submarines, uh, ICBM delivery systems, Knesset statements about Europe better do what we want, we've got nukes. I, I mean, Israel's one of the biggest nuclear powers in the world with a super high-tech system, and nobody is going to mess with them. People say, oh, well, the Iranians want war right now. They're crazy. They think it's the end of the world. 
Funny, I see Christian websites, I see comments on my videos, and I go to the people's YouTube channels, and they're like, praise the Lord, I want Armageddon to begin. B nuke the Middle East now. Well, Iran's not even in the Middle East, but you can't even basically explain that to some people. I Iran has sat there and taken the West, Israel, the U.S., and England, blowing up their military bases in the last five years. Five years ago, Bush put out a White House press release that we covered here on air saying, the White House has activated four freedom fighting groups out of Iraq to attack and destabilize Iran. And those groups are all, except for the Kurd group, Al-Qaeda. Same Al-Qaeda our government has now used to take over Libya and is now used to begin the invasion of Syria on record. And now it's in what Associated Press Press TV and other publications today that the United States on the Lebanese, that is the banks that have hijacked our country, headline U.S. setting up buffer zone on Lebanon-Syrian border. So the invasion beachhead is now starting. That's what they called it, the invasion with U.S., British, and other troops backing up the invasion of Libya. They called it humanitarian corridors. They, they're setting up a humanitarian, like the humanitarian love bombs. And now Obama says he doesn't need congressional approval to, or even debate or even consultation. First, it's no declaration of war. Then it's congressional approval. Then it's congressional consultation. And now I don't need your stinking consultation. And now the Congress has voted, and Obama has signed it, the NDAA, to empower the president to secretly arrest or kill U.S. citizens in the U.S. or anywhere in the world, torture, you name it. Congress is just ceding all of its power. Now, again, Obama himself, this is a paradox, is a teleprompter reading puppet who's on vacation probably 10 days out of the month on average. More vacation than George W. Bush because they're puppets. Bill Clinton was hardly ever on vacation. And when he was, he was working because he was a, such a wicked globalist that they actually trusted him to actually run things. Bill Clinton, people say the last president was Kennedy. That's not true. Kennedy was a president that didn't follow the globalist orders and tried to be president and they killed him. Clinton is the, is, is the last president, and, and George Herbert Walker Bush to a certain extent as well actually ran things. But Clinton was the last one to really run things. Because they're like, well, you're anti-freedom, anti-America, anti-Second Amendment, total global communist for the mega banks to destroy all competition, and take over. We are going to let you run things. And Clinton would reportedly sleep about three hours a night and was involved in every major decision. The point is the power structure, the bureaucracy wants the executive to have dictator powers. And that's what they're doing now. And it's so dangerous, words cannot describe it. So I want to ask callers, what do you make of, and of course, Lou Rockwell is pointing it out, many others are pointing out, this looks super suspicious that they're taking the voting behind closed doors. And now saying it's going to be a, 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 a Romney landslide. When all the polls show Ron Paul in first or second place, they're now creating the hoax that, nope, it's a landslide. Everybody turned against Paul. Are they getting ready for a big scam? Because you know they'll do it. I mean, these are criminals. I want to ask you about that, and I also want to ask you, why do you think the system is openly getting rid of the Bill of Rights and Constitution and openly announcing they're going to get rid of the First Amendment and, and, and have selective Internet, Chinese-style Internet kill switches? Why do you think they're moving so fast now and the tyrants are coming out of the closet? Let's go to your phone calls. Thomas in Illinois, you're on the air. Welcome. Alex, I'll, I'll start your car for you here. 